You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio, man. We are here once again. And man, today, we have another guest for y'all today. Today's topic, we're going to focus on, man, the famous, easy, amazing topic that we all like right now entrepreneur especially in today's economy man it doesn't hurt doing that and also gonna be touching on mental health and, and wellness we're gonna have a special guest zane landon he's a communication specialist man he, he does amazing storytelling but he also is a leader in his own community he man does writing he met the president biden we gotta get that story later so man first and foremost zane landon welcome to the show how you doing oh, i'm doing well how are you doing today Doing good, man. And I know I teased the Biden story, first and foremost. <laughs> it's true, right? You, you really yes, know? Yes, it is true. If you want proof, you can go on my Instagram and LinkedIn. <laughs> There's a selfie with me and him and the rest of the other advocates that were chosen for the forum. <laughs> so, man, before we get into that story, because you were there for a reason, it wasn't like you were just walking outside and he was just happened to be on the sidewalk. So that's an amazing story right there. First, kind of tell the audience a little bit about your background. And what inspires you to do what you do today? A little bit about my background is I'm a native Californian. Um, I really love gray skies and the beach. And I'm a recent graduate from Cal Poly Pomona. I received my Bachelor of Science in Communication and Public Relations. And since the time I can remember, I always experienced mental health conditions. I was always depressed, angry, anxious, and It definitely impacted my identity, my self-esteem, and how I worked, especially when it came to schooling system. I was able to get support by seeing a psychologist for many years. I was doing relatively better than I went to university. It was a new experience, new journey, especially coming in as a first-gen student. My parents didn't receive their bachelor's degrees. It was a new experience. And there was a time where I got incredibly depressed, where I was engaging in self-harm and thinking about suicide a lot. And it's suicide is very relevant topic. I know that a lot of people are talking about it right now because the unfortunate tragedy that just happened. But I think that if we really want to normalize it, we can't wait for something like that to happen. I know a lot of people are sharing mental health resources. They're sharing their condolences. And I think it's very a good thing to share condolences. But I think we need to be always sharing mental health resources because if we only if we only share something when an incident happens, something's really going to organically change. So I'm always trying, I don't necessarily share resources all the time, like on my social media, but anyone knows that I know about it and they can come to me and I'm always accessible for anybody who needs that. And I'm aware of the resources. And I know we haven't talked about it. We won a little bit, but my digital magazine, Positive Vibes, I'm always sharing mental health resources on there constantly. I always try to have the Instagram story 100% live. Um, I mean, live with content, just so people are aware of certain messaging that they can leverage if they need that support. Um, So as I said, that was a harder time with my mental health, harder than than when it was growing up. After that is when I became more of a serious advocate because I was able to deeply understand my issues and see how they have impacted so many other people. And knowing that I wasn't alone and that I wanted to do something about it. And I knew that millions of people felt how I felt. So I wanted to make a difference. And again, even though I was relatively not the most aware, but pretty aware of mental health before, but I became more of an advocate after researching as much as I can about mental health, joining so many organizations, connecting with a lot of people who are doing similar work. So now my feed, my culture, wherever I am now, it's always about mental health, which is always very exciting because it's what I'm passionate about. And that's my mental health journey, and I really want. I talk a lot about that, but you know, I also identify as Hispanic, disabled. I'm neurodiverse, so a lot of different identities have kind of shaped who I am. That kind of intersectionality of play was able to create additional barriers and make my mental health journey different from others. But that's the really interesting thing about mental health is it really does touch almost every person's identity. It could be any gender, any race. It doesn't even matter. Of course. That stuff is going to impact mental health differently, though, but it, it can touch anyone, though. So I think it's an interesting, inclusive community, which means we have to be very cognizant and mindful of 
the different social identities that people have when they do have mental health and how it's all impacted and how it all connects. That was like a long-winded answer, but <laughs> but that's a bit about me and my background. Oh, that's perfect, man. That's perfect. And yeah, you touched on uh, tragic recent uh, news uh, this mm-hmm. week. Uh, Stephen T. Uh, Twitch boss, uh, that situation. Um, mm-hmm. Carson Daly also made a statement on on today, just kind of letting people know, man, don't don't just assume just because you see someone on social media or TV that you know everything's perfect in their life. So yeah. I think that's a good dialogue that hopefully people will. We'll explore because, yeah, just assuming that someone's life is perfect, you know, you don't know the battles that they could be facing. So rest in peace to to uh, Stephen Twitch, boss. And yeah. um, for those who think they need some help, man, hopefully they will reach out to professional services that can you know, help assist them with that. But that's something that is very important to you. So my next question will be, how do you or how have you been able to support your mental health so that way you're continuously progressing and doing what you're doing as far as just building communities and, and helping uh, people in a positive way? I think the most important thing for me is to be vulnerable. I think because the moment you become vulnerable and you take up the space, people do see it. And I think it's something that we don't see enough. And I'm not saying like, I'm not the only, I'm not the only, I'm, I'm not saying I'm the only vulnerable person. There's a millions of people who are vulnerable, but I still feel like there's shame and stigma associated with being vulnerable and sharing your mental health. And there, I think there always will be. But for me, I think that's what's helped the most that vulnerable with myself, I connect with myself and I really think about what it is that I need in that moment. And I do not shy away from communicating it. I and I think I know that's hard for some people, especially if they're in a place where or an environment where that will not be supported or you might be thrown into a terrible circumstance because of it. So, again, everyone's circumstances are different and it will impact if you're able to be vulnerable. But the ones that can, I understand it's hard, especially for people who are vulnerable and that they've been taken advantage of like that. I mean, that's happened to me and many people that their heart and their emotions have been taken advantage of. So I understand why some people. Do, do not want to be vulnerable, but I hope that someone can find someone that they can trust. And if it's not even just someone personally, you know, I always encourage people to join a community. If it's a religious group or if it's a nonprofit or if it's a mental health organization where you can volunteer and just talk to someone, even sometimes even talking to someone where there's no strings attached and you don't really even know them is kind of the release that you need. And it, you may get that support that you need. I mean, recently I was feeling kind of, de- kind of depressed and, but I, was able to connect with someone that I didn't really know. And we connected very well, really quickly. Um, and that was just really exciting. I don't know what the relationship's going to look like in the future, if we're going to remain friends, because um, I'm moving soon and all that stuff. But anyways, but that, help, that helps too, is finding people that can support you. And there are so many groups out there nowadays. Um, you know, you can virtually tap into all these organizations that have meetings, so many people that want to help. So definitely tap into the a community and just insert yourself. A lot of times we we have to find a means to get in or we have to think that, how am I going to fit in? How am I going to get in? Just insert yourself and take up that space and just ask, how can I get involved? How can I do something? Can I talk to someone? I need help, whatever it is. And for me, I understand that people may look at you differently if you're vulnerable about stuff like suicide or self-harm and people will look at you differently. I feel like I've just grown a little indifferent to it. <laughs> and I don't, I depends on you know other people but that's not for everyone but for me if people do view me differently because i mentioned something like suicide it's not the people i need to be around that's not the people that are going to support me and that is the concern of our relationship some relationships i can't be vulnerable with some people because they are not comfortable around that and they have a boundary too so another thing that i do is you know i set boundaries making sure that how vulnerable do i need to be how close do i need to get to people do i always say yes to certain things i need to say no i need to start taking care of myself, I need to start scheduling times where I can actually take myself away and actually focus on myself in my my spare time or my alone time. And of course, getting professional help. I'm not getting professional help right now. I'm doing pretty well, but you know, I'm always open to it if I need it. And I'm moving to DC, so I'm gonna be looking for 
a psychologist and there was times where I tried different medications. So aside from taking ownership of my boundaries, surrounding myself with people who are going to be not the best to me and, and challenge me, like question me and professional help. So those are like the main things I have done that have supported my mental health. I hope that all makes sense. It does. You listen now, Refocus Radio, talking to our guest, Zane Landon. And man, talking about his life, talking about what he's doing, talking about mental health today, and also entrepreneurship. You are the founder and president of Landing Dreams PR. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure a lot of this that we're talking about inspired this, this brand that you're building. Tell us a little bit about what all this with Landing Dreams PR, what you do and specialize in. Yeah, of course. So I will start off first because that was born from the magazine. So I'll just share just quickly. In 2020, I started Positive Vibes magazine, which was to address the mainstream's gap in mental health stories. And we were, and I still run it now. And we feature people from across the board who have experienced mental health conditions, who have been assaulted, who have experienced racism, you know, a lot of different stories and we encourage them to be vulnerable so i think if we want to really shift our culture we need to get to the raw truth to really understand why these things happen and how people actually feel when they happen um and from their point of view their story not written by someone else and of course the story is written by someone else but like we make sure it's their story and they they green light it to make sure it is their authentic truth anyways so i connected with someone who we featured in the magazine who's like a spiritual leader and she was interested in having a publicist and she knew I was going to school for PR. So she requested like, could you be my publicist? And I was like, I can, but <laughs> I'm still very new to this. Like I haven't even graduated. So you'll have to understand, I'm, not, I'm probably not gonna get you on Vogue. I'm probably not gonna get you on New York Times, but we can definitely sp specify your uh, identities and see where we can land them in smaller targeted audiences, like smaller podcasts, smaller platforms. And I say smaller just because their audience isn't like as big as New York Times, but the value is still there. Yeah. I think some people focus on the numbers. Again, you can't even look at numbers with podcasts. If you look at a podcast and they have 200 followers, they could have like 10,000 listeners per week. Mm. I, so, I mean, I, I've been on podcasts that have pretty high, a pretty low following, but really high listening. Uh, so, so you don't, you can't always focus on the numbers because you don't even know like what the data is from the back end. Exactly. But so that was kind of my idea with her. And so I was thinking I was getting her on some pretty interesting things. And she had a lot of identities that we could create, uh, we can um, leverage because again, it's like when people think about their story, people think about sharing one aspect. Um, and if it's for her, it was like, I want to share the aspect of being a spiritual healer. And in my opinion, I was like, that's great, but you're also a mother. You're also a black woman. You're also a business owner. You're also religious. And so there's a lot of things that you could tap into like not and if you and if you really just want to talk about your spirituality i think that's great but again don't limit yourself to what platforms you could potentially be on because you have such a strong intersectionality and you can bring those spiritual aspects to other platforms may, they may not specify they may not like specialize in it but you should be able to like leverage your voice in that way um and so throughout doing that i feel i feel like i became even though i'm doing pr i feel like i'm becoming like a storytelling consultant <laughs> It's not exactly a title I have yet, but I want to be one day where I can actually sit down with people and like support them and how to tell their story, how to really have the most impact and the longest form story. Because you think about it, how are you going to condense your story in 20, 30, 40 years of living? You really have to think and focus on the most important aspects and really think about what you've learned and what value to bring to people. And everyone brings value. I think everybody does. Um, so... That is what I helped her with. And then after that, I mean, I, again, I was working with people from the magazine. And so people we featured, some of them reached out to be clients. And I was like, wow, I'm actually kind of building something here. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, right now I haven't done it too much. So I, I was focused on building that brand relatively last year. I haven't focused too much on it because um, usually that was going to be the face of my PR work. But like some of the PR work I'm doing now, I just feel like I'm just doing it independently. <laughs> they're not signing a contract through the firm. They're not, they're not like, associated with it. So that's what I'm going to focus on building a little bit later when I have more time. I'm still doing PR work for like independent content creators um, and helping them get on different platforms. Like I was able to get some people on like WebMD, on podcasts, on live streams. I was able to get 
client of mine on like a live stream podcast has like re- a lot of followers. I can't remember how many, but it was a lot. But so that some of that's really exciting because I think also since mental health is such a unexplored like aspect of storytelling, we don't see enough of mental health in the news. Right now we are. But again, that's because you know, we see a tragedy. And I feel like that's when you see it in the mainstream media, not organically. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying it's bad. I think it's great. I'm glad that, you know, well, I'm not glad it happened, but I'm saying like, I'm glad that people are talking about it. People are sharing resources. You know, people are, are tuning into these mental health conversations. But I think, you know, literally, I think it's 40 seconds every day, a person dies by suicide every 40 seconds. 40 seconds to a minute. I can't remember the exact, but Worldwide, this happens every single day. A person dies almost every minute. So this does not go away. And so we cannot only prioritize it when someone well-known dies. We need to make sure we're always trying to create the space and have those conversations and support the people around us all the time, especially since you just said before, you can't see through their smiles. You know, it's like, that's where it gets like kind of hard and really scary because it's like, we can see and pinpoint when someone's depressed and that's when we can reach out. But how do we know when someone is not being vulnerable or they're they're putting up a face that they're doing well when maybe they're not in their life? So I think that that just goes to show that we always need to be mindful. We always need to be reaching out to the people around us, even if we think they're doing well. Even a simple check in could probably go a long way for someone like that. And you never know. Um, So that is one thing I will say. And again, if that doesn't work, that's why I always said the beginning. I always try to be vulnerable because. If I can be vulnerable, then maybe that person that doesn't want to or has no feeling of getting professional help, maybe they will after hearing someone speak their truth. I think it's such a powerful thing. And I think I I want more people to do it as much as I can. Um, Yeah. And that's a good point because what you're saying is simply speak up, tell your your, uh, story, what is going on in your world. Because it, it, actually invites the other people who will want to speak but may not feel like you know they can or it's the right time or or whatever the reason will be but yeah i I think creating that space where people can actually say you know what yeah i thought i was the only one who had that issue or i thought i was the only one going through that so yeah i think you're right on, on that point because People are hungry. They want to find out, man, what does Zane have to go through? You know, like, how, how does he get to meet President Biden? You know, how does he get to do all these things? How does he get to work on his PR, you know, launch his business, work with all these people, have a magazine, you know? And, I mean... That's what it is. You're you're on this platform. You're on RB Focus Radio telling your blueprint of your life, of how you basically manage to succeed. And everyone's success is different. So my next question will be, when you started to make these moves, I mean, you attended your first ever mental health youth action forum in Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. See, I did that set, but... <laughs> No, that of course. put you in position, man, to meet some amazing people. Tell us that backstory of what all happened. Yeah, I will. And I, I kind of want to go back just a bit because I just want to share that we need to, it's good to be vulnerable ourselves so we can maybe inspire others. We also need to listen. I think that is so important. Let's say someone is doing very well and, or they look like doing very well. They're very happy. But then maybe... There's some things you see that you never noticed before. Like maybe they said, I'm feeling depressed today. Um, but they still have a smile on their face. Like, wait. Or they're not like super depressed or super sad, but they still mention that I've been struggling a bit with this. Maybe that means something, you know, maybe it needs to be explored. And so I think that we also really need to listen. I mean, I don't I think sometimes again, people don't want to be vulnerable because maybe they have been and people just don't listen or they don't take them seriously. So so many reasons why people kind of shade away from their story but i think it's so important that we take an effort to empathetically really listen and actively listen to someone because maybe there's something in their voice or something they're saying that doesn't align with what they how they've been before and that might be really important so again maybe sometimes when we see these people that seem like the most happy people 
maybe they have reached out or maybe they have mentioned things, but we just, we didn't listen enough. So anyways, I just want to, no, that's my true. thoughts as, that's you, true. as you were talking. <clears throat> um, segue though. So around November of 2021, December 2021, yeah, like MTV came out and then like they said that they're doing this mental health youth action forum and I discovered it through Active Minds, which was a organization I was part of that has like university chapters. They're all about get mental health advocacy. Um, and so I followed Active Minds. I saw the opportunity, opportunity on LinkedIn. And immediately I was like, I need to apply for this. Like this, <laughs> this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And wow, it's great that I know people. I don't, I mean, I didn't know people per se, but luckily I knew organizations. So like they asked you in the application, like what organizations are you affiliated with? And luckily I was affiliated like three or four. So since I was aware of like certain organizations, um, I think it, I don't think it gave me a, a huge advantage, but it gave me somewhat of, I know they're coming from, these are the type of organizations they're engaging with. I kind of knew the audience they were trying to reach out to. And, you know, it was definitely all about youth. So it was youth mental health, which is a very um, interesting topic. I think it's really important because again, I say this and a lot of people know, but you know, second leading cause of death for young people is suicide. So a lot of young people are experiencing a lot of mental health problems or conditions, whatever it is. So I think it's, you know, it's an important topic. And I love that it was being hosted by MTV at the White House with almost, um, I think it was like 19 nonprofits. And these were like National Alliance on Mental Illness, Jed Foundation, Born This Way, really amazing organizations. So I knew that, the, I knew that this was like, important and then not to say it wasn't before but like mtv the white house sometimes media companies you never know what their angles are yeah but like just to see that like these serious nonprofits that have like such prominence in the mental health movement that have been around for years was very telling of what this event was like so i knew that it was something i really wanted to be part of and again it's always so hard to answer like when people ask me how do i think i got in or what do you think helped me? Because for me, I always envisioned me going to the White House to attend an event or be awarded, whatever it was. But again, that's something I dreamed of and something I've always wanted. But I never thought it'd be possible. And if it, if it was, I thought it'd be like towards the end of my life or towards the end of my career, whatever whatever it be I did, what I was doing. Um, and still, that was a pipe dream. But it was... So I decided to apply because, again, even though I had those doubts, I decided to apply, which is why I always tell everyone, just putting yourself out there can change everything. And so I, there might have been people that saw that opportunity and decided not to apply because they convinced themselves they weren't good enough. So, I, again, I always think we, we are our own worst enemy. We have a shadow always telling us what we're scared of all the time. Because um, you, hear, you hear the same, which is you, your inner voice is always telling you you're not good enough because... In reality, we fear our greatness, which I believe, because mm -hmm. it's scary to think what we can accomplish. And I think everyone has the capability of being phenomenal people. So anyways, a little bit of the backstory of how I was feeling before. So I did decide to apply, even though I convinced myself I wasn't going to get it. Um, and so it was very brief, too. The application was very brief. Like, they didn't ask much. Like, they asked a couple questions. They didn't even, like, they didn't even, like, require a resume or anything. Like, they just had you answer, like, three questions, each 150 words. And like, you had to mention what nonprofits you were a part of. That was it. I, it was very, very brief, which I think may have been an interesting, equitable way to choose people too. I think that's what they're going when they did that. Anyway, so I replied, I didn't hear back and I just assumed nothing was going on. Then one day I checked in my spam and I got the email that I was a semifinalist. And I was like, oh man, <laughs> and I was like, there's another round. <laughs> Um, but I, cause I was scared at first. I was like, Oh, I thought there, I thought there was gonna be two more rounds, semifinalists, finalists. And then I was like, Oh man. But I ended up, um, being like, that was the last round. You submit one more application. And again, it was a very brief application, but I think because I didn't hold back on what I believed in, I didn't hold back on who I was. Even when they asked for any speaking engagements he was done, I linked every podcast I was on, which I, at the time was like 20, not that many, like 20 or 30. And so. I just made sure that I knew my worth. I was like, I got to show them everything that I've got because they're asking for it. So even if I was like, oh, they're probably, 
this is probably too many links. I didn't care. <laughs> I I know people say less is more, but in my opinion, more was better uh-huh. because you really wanted to show what you were you accomplish because there's only so much they are asking. They weren't asking a lot, so it was a good opportunity. It was once in a lifetime. But then, huh? It was once in a lifetime. It was, so I had to give them my all, right? Yeah. And so, um, submit that, and then like around a month later, which was February, I, I, I got the email. I literally got the email in my inbox that said, congratulations, you were selected. And I, don't know, I feel like time kind of froze. You know, I think people, I think people know what I mean by that. (laughs) You know, like time freezes, like nothing's around you. You're stuck in that moment. You're just staring at that, that email message. Like, I don't know. This is a favor dream. (laughs) Yeah. Um, You know, experience. (laughs) Yeah. And I was like, this can't be real. (laughs) Um, I think after a while, I gathered my thoughts and I was like, I can't believe it. And so told my family and they were in disbelief, not in the disbelief that I would get it, but just disbelief that that's, it's happening. So, uh, so exciting. And then it was just such a great opportunity. And I think what helped me the most get something like that was again, telling myself I'm worth it and entering the space that I wanted to be in, like taking up space in these mental health groups, volunteering as much as I can, asking questions, building connections, doing the work. Cause again, it's, it was a lot of stuff. I feel like I was burnt out like throughout university doing all this stuff. Cause I just graduated, like I said, last in May. So I, I always felt like I was doing so much more. I was involved in probably way too many things. And that helped me, but I don't encourage that on anyone. Being involved in university helped me. And honestly, just being part of these groups gave me more meaning. But it was a lot. Um, and I was burned out a lot. So I really wasn't necessarily <laughs> taking care of mental health fully as much as I could have. So it was a little contradictory to what I was doing. But this is what I wanted to do, though. Um, but, and, and honestly, just give, being in the groups gave me more tools and more support than I needed. So in a way, I was helping my mental health and longevity of things. But anyway, so the mental health forum, they chose 30 people and we started off just on Zoom, like doing like these, I think we're doing bi-weekly sessions where we're getting to know everyone, connect with all these different nonprofits and the White House folks and MTV. There was always like 60, 70 people in the room, which was always like so exciting. It's like, it's not that it's a lot of people, but it's like, these are like, high level people like working at the white house like i never thought i would connect with people that had these careers and it's just incredibly exciting and i'm, I'm excited that i have con- networks with these places now if i ever want to work there it's not as simple as getting a job like like that but i still have you know a connection if i ever want to learn more about something um so that happened and then we were doing that until you know the forum happened in may it was just unbelievable. I'll, uh, there was a lot of, there was different events happening like Tuesday, but Wednesday was like the most exciting part, which was actually going in the White House. And again, it felt like time stood still when you were there. And I think that that was a good thing because sometimes we can get in over our heads and like the moments just go away. You know what I mean? And so like I tried my best to be present because I knew that the forum would end so fast. And it did. By the time it was over, it just felt like it went by so quickly um so i always tell people try and stay present because moments like that are, are they will go away fast like time moves so quickly especially when you're in a place like that um for some it's slow but so but everyone's different that's just what my perspective was but yeah you know at the forum how it was designed was we would go in the event and there would be we were sitting on uh like couches that were on a stage and there were, again 30 of us and Six people spoke. I wasn't one of the speakers, but they chose six people to speak out of the 30 of us. Um, I just loved hearing their stories. And I love that it was broadcasted. I love that there were people at the event that had all these different identities and that there was so many groups, so many intersections coming together for this important topic. And to hear people like Dr. Biden and Dr. Murthy, even Selena Gomez, because she was basically the keynote, which I thought was great because she's a mental health advocate and she really does the work. So it was, it was great to meet her. <laughs> it was very brief. Like I met her probably like for like 20 seconds, but it was still great to be acknowledged by her. And again, Dr. Biden, Dr. Murthy, to hear their, their transparent transparency and their openly passion, their open passion for mental health was something was exciting to see coming from the white house. Cause again, why mental health has been a very disenfranchised group for very long very little support from the government. So 
Um, again, I don't know exactly what policies or things changed from the White House coming from this forum. I don't know if it did, but I still think it was a great moment across, I'm going to say the nation, just because it, it was broadcasted on like big platforms um, for people to see that. And again, even if nothing like physical changes, like maybe soon, I still think it was like a symbol of like change because people in their living rooms, people who may be experiencing this, seeing that on TV, I think is what might drive people to get the help they need. And also for families to be more open about mental health and to learn about it. And again, the more accurate, widespread information we can get, the more people are going to understand it. And that's how it can become less stigmatized. So at the end of the event, we went back into the room, we were waiting and that's where Biden showed up. That's where President Biden showed up. And again, we were convinced he wasn't coming because he wasn't on the press release. So I don't know if he was supposed to be there. I was grateful if, if he really wasn't, I'm grateful that he showed up despite that he probably has literally no time to do anything. So, right. um, I mean, I can't imagine oh, he that is job. The president, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he had to leave. Like he talked to us for like 20, like, I think he talked to us for like 15 minutes and we were like huddled in a circle. Like we were children, <laughs> wow. um, like just kind of listening to what he had to say about things. Uh, and then he had to go, like he had to leave in like 15 minutes. And so, you know, it was a great opportunity. Everyone held out hope. I was like, no, he's coming. Just wait. <laughs> Which I feel like I manifested in a way. <laughs> but part of history, a- man. I mean, I feel like I was there the way you're telling the story, man. Like the whole audience were like in this moment right now, just hearing you talk. So you're part of history, man. Yeah, it was again really exciting. And I know you said like how do how do how does someone get to a place like that? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a very hard thing. And I'm not someone who has 20, 30, 40 years of experience doing the work that long. I haven't really only been doing it for like three to four years. But I think because, again, I inserted myself in these places and made sure I learned as much as I could about these communities and handle them with care and always lead with vulnerability, even if that means telling people about the time. I cut myself or all that stuff, you know, things that people don't want to hear about. I don't want to hear about, people don't want to hear about that. But I think it's important to hear though. So again, that's what I think did the most. I think have those intentions, be your authentic self and also be a good person. And I understand that (laughs) there are good people that suffer, but I really believe in my heart that they, good things are going to be coming for them. You know what I mean? That's, those are only my thoughts. I know that's controversial, but I believe that. Once again, listen to our Refocus Radio talking to our guest, Zane Landon, man, founder and president of Landing Dreams PR. I mean, what a story you can be sharing when you promote yourself everywhere. I mean, not everyone has met or had the the opportunity and fortunate opportunity to meet the president of the United States. I mean, man. That's powerful right there, man. Just being able to be in the presence of the president of the United States, man. I mean, when you saw him in the same room, were you chill and calm, like, oh, okay, that's what's up? Or were you at all, like, just kind of, like, nervous or anything like that? What was your feeling when you saw the president of the United States enter the room? There was a... <laughs> there was a little process. I think um, people were kind of talking and like I was by myself and I looked to my right and there he was. I don't remember him coming in um, and I kind of looked at him and I was like, is that really him? I really like, I think some people would be like overtly excited, but in my head I was like, is that him? Like I really, <laughs> yeah. and it looked just like him, but I was like, is that wallpaper? Again, it felt like it wasn't real. So I was like, huh? I was like, is that really him? When did he get here? Like, and so he was talking with the other one of another forum participant. I was like, that is him. And I was like, what? <laughs> and then so like that's when like my nerves kind of bottled up. And I was like, oh my goodness, like, what is happening? And so when he a couple of the forum participants got to like shake his hand, he shook hands with just a couple of them, just like the ones he was closest to. I was like two people behind him. 
So I was like, in my head, not to sound rude, but I was like, I was like, can people move so I can shake his <laughs> hand? But that didn't right. happen. But still, he looked at me, and that is the <laughs> the recognition. The music started playing. Of the existence of me is is enough. But yeah, to be right there near him, yeah, definitely. It was chill at first because I didn't see it. I didn't believe it. And I was like, then the fears, not the fears, the like anxiety came and then the excitement. So it was a little like a little series of emotions. <laughs> and that's cool, man, because like I said, it doesn't happen to every person. So yeah. being able to have that opportunity to see the president of the United States and then, like you said, you you were able to uh, get evidence of, of, of a photo. So um, I think that's pretty cool, man. I mean, that was part of the story. Uh, I couldn't wait to hear because you, you, talk, you talked about in, in the show uh, just the dream, right? I mean, yeah. you, you keep mentioning that thing, you know, like manifesting it, you know, what it is you're trying to do and and it's really a choice, man. I mean, I've interviewed some very interesting people in this world. This morning, I talked to uh, Bryce Leatherwood, the winner of The Voice. And wow. I know I say that every time I get to talk to someone cool. I'm like, wow, I get to talk to someone. What? What? But I come to the conclusion because I asked him a question. I said, man, so now that you won, you have a platform. So what will you what will you tell to aspiring dreamers like yourself? Because you've done it. You know, you won. You know, what, what would you say to that person who has a dream, just like you did? He said the most simplest thing. He said, don't give up. Boom. I'm like, man, you're going to make me get a microphone and start singing. But I ain't going to do that. I know my life. But my point is, like, <laughs> he's 100% right. Yeah. Just like what you just said, you know, with President Biden. Mm -hmm. You took that moment and you own it. And I just feel like, because you talked about how, like, if, if, you, if you're not careful, the moments just, you know, go away because time is going. And if you're not careful, you let it slip. I ain't trying to yeah. quote Eight Mile, but I kind of did. But it's like, it's true. When you capture that moment, boom. It's like you never get this moment for the next billion years times affinity, right? Because mm -hmm. when you capture it, boom, it's yours. I ain't trying to be deep on the show, but I just kind of felt going there because I feel like that's everyone's, like, turning point. You know, I had a mentor who told me, you know, this a, there's a turning point in life, and then there's a point of no return. Mm, yeah. And I feel like when he said that, part of that speaks to me is, like, if you don't own the moment, then all you have is regrets. So we have to do a better job owning the moment in life. So I didn't mean ramble on that, but as we're wrapping this up, you talk to the audience because you've been doing that with not just the communities you've been part of, but you, the founder and president of Lanny Dreams PR. Mm -hmm. Pitch yourself, man. Talk to the audience, man. Yeah. And talk to them about owning the moment and and some of the exciting things that you plan to do in the future. Yeah, I know that that's great advice, especially since I know so many people that have a great story. They do not know how to pitch it. They don't know how to get it out there. Um, and it's simply just asking um, and, <laughs> and reaching out. That's what's helped me. Like get on, getting on different platforms, it's reaching out and just sharing my story and my interest. And again, I think the last question you asked about how do you discover or how do you accomplish that dream or how do you find that dream? I think it's never give up. But I also think there's something wrong with having a new dream though. I think you always need to be a dreamer all the time. And maybe there's a dream that you had when you were a kid and you don't want to you don't want that dream anymore. You're 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 a totally different person now. Maybe you still want that. I would say keep fighting for it. But I don't think there's anything wrong with changing dreams. I think if that's the thing, though, always be a dreamer. That's what I think. You know, always, always have in the back of your head that vision where you want to be. I think that's the most important thing. Like, and even if it's not the dream you want, and even if the dream you want feels ambitious, 
it may not be it might not be far from you um and if it is that doesn't mean you can't accomplish it later i think that we look at age and time as such a deficit we look at oh i'm in my 40s i'm in my 50s and i can't accomplish anything more i don't believe in that i'm not anywhere near that age but i know people who go back to school who start mm-hmm. businesses who become millionaires and that's not everyone but i see people who accomplish things that are older and i think that's great and i think just because you're Older doesn't mean you can't accomplish anything. Doesn't mean you can't reach that dream that you've always wanted. Because I see that. I see people look at age and time as such an enemy, and yeah. that there's not enough time. And yeah, really, we don't have as much time. But I still think we have enough time to catch our dreams, though. I mean, it's like you're you're a business. You're the president of landing dreams. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I first heard uh, you talking about that, and I read it in the bio. I literally picture like an airplane landing with someone's dream, <laughs> you know? Like, I think that's that's such a clever way to, like, you know, name your business. I mean, that's that's pretty awesome, man. Great work there, man. I mean, uh, last thing I'll say, we're almost close to Christmas, and 2023 is right around the corner. It'll be here, and before you know it, everyone's going to be talking about how new me, new year, whatever. But you personally... What do you see for your future self? What's it like? If you can pick any dot on the map, any level in your business, what's your ultimate goal that you want to do as far as your platform? Hmm. I mean, the platform is I I definitely want to generate more clients to get them on bigger places so events health stories are always happening especially on um, bigger platforms but i think i'm more going to be focused next year on my personal self because i am moving i have a new job i'm working at national geographic dang specifically wow. wait, 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 specifically. wait 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 what's the backstory on that man because that's pretty <laughs> okay i'll show the backstory i mean i had no connection and I, I say not national geographic but like specifically the society yeah. Um, which is the um, philanthropy side. They provide the grants, the nonprofit. And so I just saw the position online and I was working in like an internship. And then I had like a consulting um, position I had with my previous university. I saw the position. I was like, I want to apply for this. I think I saw it in August because it was the exact position I was looking for, which is internal communication specialist. No, I'm not a photographer as people would think or a scientist but I am doing internal communications to support the organization. And I was looking for a position where I did that because I was doing work in there when I, because I interned at General Motors. I was doing a lot of work in internal communications and I loved it. Like I love the work and I feel like it was really empowering to employees and making sure that everyone's on the same page. So I applied for the position. I didn't know anyone there, which is, it's kind of difficult to find a position. We don't know anyone or have a network there, but I didn't know a single person. (laughs) I just think that, my work spoke for itself. I had a strong resume, a, a strong portfolio as well, where it really highlighted all the things I accomplished. And I mentioned personal stuff. I did mention mental health. I didn't talk about like suicide, but I mentioned mental health is a passion of mine. I met President Biden. I have my own business. So like things that feel like they're outside of corporate realm, like really apply though. You know, even if it had nothing to do with a job or work experience, I think people want to hear that because that stuff is exciting to see. Um, so yeah, I just started recently. I started three weeks ago. It's been remote, but I'm moving to DC next month, the first week of January. So in almost like three weeks. So it's going to be an exciting time, but it's going to be a, a new beginning for myself, my career, everything. So it's going to be really interesting. Listen, I'm refocus radio talking to our guest, Zane Landon. He is not just landing dreams, but he's landing major jobs, man. That's that's big, man. That's that's cool. I mean, not everyone can say that. That's my point. I've been saying that throughout the whole show, man. You're doing stuff that not all of us get to do. And I think that plays a big role in your decisions and how you see yourself. And I, I know you said the new year you're going to be focused on that. And I think that's smart because I think if we all are serious, about going to the next level, we got a member to take ourselves there. 
because sometimes we get too carried away worrying about what everyone else has, right? And we we miss the opportunity to grow our seeds that are inside of us. Mm, wow. Yeah, I love the way you say that. So, man, once again, uh, people can find you on LinkedIn, but is that the mm-hmm. best place for people to connect with you if someone uh, hears this episode like, you know what, I need to connect with Zane. Is that the best place people can go to? LinkedIn is for sure the best because I am, it's my biggest platform and I'm really active on there, but also on Instagram. Those are my two favorite platforms. So reach out. Awesome. Well, once again, I'm your focus radio talking to Zane Landon. He is doing big things. You want to connect with him ASAP and just watch him grow into, man, wherever he chooses to be because he is the founding president of any dreams, PR, doing big things. Man, I want to say thank you for taking time to schedule talking to us today. Well, thank you again for allowing me to.